Our executive producer, Daniel Marins, just handed me this note about uh, an island in Denmark that is striving to become carbon neutral, and they rely, uh, Daniel Marins, a lot on these sort of a wind turbines, uh, propeller-like things off the ocean, and it's part of uh, the effort to make sure that they have renewable energy and energy efficiency. Yeah, Dave, I mean, I was just adding that it, that it can be economically productive and that, we, you know, this town has been working, I guess, since 2007. Together, I'd read about them in the New Yorker magazine a couple of years ago. And uh, they really just made it kind of like a big science project and got everybody involved. And they put all these wind turbines up and they figured out ways to use energy-efficient light bulbs. And, I mean, rather than think of these kind of collective measures as austere or draconian, we can, we can just get our sort of inner child out and, and think of this like a big creative project. And I think that's, that's exciting. Well, and that takes my question uh, back to you, Ben, and that is somebody, you're in Philadelphia, you know folks in Jersey in the area of Pennsylvania who are affected by Sandy. Um, is this the sort of thing that you think people can, can swallow? Could, could people in Pennsylvania or Philadelphia, would they be fine to see these gigantic windmills or propeller, propellers off the coast or, or in areas that, where they like to go to the beach? Uh, big question. Uh, the answer, I think, is actually on the street right now, meaning as we watch uh, New Jersey try to figure out how to get out of this, people still do not have power. Um, there's still devastation on the coast here, and uh, I personally would like to see, and this maybe uh, is a lot easier for me to say, I don't have property on a beach or something like that, but mankind seems you know, to have built uh, essentially where nature said not to build. So in these moments, it might be a good time to sort of rethink how we, you know, cohabitate on a planet. So I think Daniel's point, he's talking about a, a microcosm out there, a small island off Denmark. Um, this might be a, a good time to think about something like that. Um, but uh, let, let me add, too, is that and I've got some statistics up here in front of me. Um, you know, if the United States used to be the biggest contributor to greenhouse emissions, um, we had, since the last surveys have been done recently, uh, China has surpassed us, and we've actually seen a carbon dioxide emissions drop, energy use drop, to our lowest levels since 1992. Um, and the Department of Energy is attributing this to a mild winters, a uh, shift from coal to natural gas, and a slow economy. So it seems like the, uh, there are favors or forces out there that would say that now is a time to rethink this and take these type of radical measures. Um, but Again, I really feel that a lot in the political world out there, a lot of people in the political world see this as an economic issue uh, and a down economy. I'm not so sure that people are going to see this as the right time to do it, even though perhaps Mother Nature is saying here's an opportunity. Such a great point. The timing is tough when the economy is, uh, is, is challenging as it is now, and perhaps it's one of the reasons why President Obama is not focusing on it, why Democrats generally are not as focused on it, but we are. Yeah. And Ben Barnett? CEO of Take Action News, we appreciate you coming on and sharing your expertise in all things climate change. And uh, folks, again, if you can catch Ben Barnett's segment on YouTube, Take Action News TV, or you can sign up for our podcast on iTunes. We'll continue with the debate over Social Security when Take Action News continues.